As a small business leader, your name and reputation is all you have. If it evaporates in the thin air, then the stability of your business will be short-lived. Your ability to lead and manage others will also be a test of your durability and capability as a leader in your small or medium-sized business. For some context, I want to bring you some notes of interest from our friends at Forbes. 65% of senior leadership who was surveyed by the Center for Creative Leadership in 2020 revealed they would describe their leadership team as being ineffective and only about one in five found their leadership teams to be high performing. My friend Diane Helbig has plenty of experience of over two decades in the field of small business leadership and motivating small business owners to reach the heights of their own potential. By believing that a change of behavior isn't necessarily a bad thing. She's an internationally recognized business and leadership development advisor, author, award-winning speaker, and workshop facilitator. She's also a certified professional coach and the president and founder of Helbig Enterprises. Diane is passionate about helping her clients operate more efficiently and effectively as organizations and small businesses. She evaluates, encourages, and guides her clients to believe that each individual business is a unique entity on its own, and she helps cultivate what makes a business great and helps her business owners and organizational leaders understand their value proposition statement and use it to their advantage when they're looking to achieve business and personal prosperity. And how big? Join me this week to tell me more. I'm Kevin McShane. Let's have this conversation. to welcome you to the program that I'm super excited to talk to you this morning all about leadership and business. Great to see you and happy Thursday to you. Well, thank you. Happy Thursday to you. Absolutely. So, Diane, I know that you help businesses and organizations sort of operate more constructively and uh, profitably. So uh, I'm wondering if you could tell me how uh, what makes you so fabulous and how you got to where you are today? Oh my gosh, I would love to. So I've always worked in small business, either in leadership or in sales. And about 18 years ago, I decided that I wanted to take everything that I had learned and help mainly small business owners do better things in their business. So really help them get past the blockages and the struggles and challenges that they were experiencing. So I launched in early 2006 and been doing it ever since. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, Diana, I also want to talk to you about evaluating and 
encouraging business owners uh, to kind uh, uh, their way towards business prosperity. And I know that you have a specific way that you help uh, evaluate and guide your clients to business prosperity. So I'm wondering if you could share that with me this morning. Sure, absolutely. So I believe that the business owners bring themselves to their business. You know, they they bring their thought process, their previous experiences, their fears, their goals, all of those things. And so for me, it's important to get to know them and to really be able to understand how they process information. Uh, because in my opinion, it's the only way to help them create strategies that are going to help that they will actually implement, I, I guess is really like that. I do my business my way because of who I am, but I can't say to someone here, just do this and you'll be successful. I have to help them figure out what they should be doing because it's what they will do. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Diane, I know that you're being, as you said, in developing and cultivating strategies in business. So tell me, what do you think is the key to creating a stabilizing strategy as a small business owner? Boy, I, I think I would say the key is um, not trying to do everything at once. So what I say to my clients is, you can do anything you want in your business. You just can't do it all at the same time. So let's pick the thing you want to focus on and put everything else in a parking lot because we know we can go borrow, you know, we can grab from it once this is sustainable. And I think a lot of small business owners, we, you know, get new ideas all the time and we want to do all of them and it, it doesn't work and then we're frustrated. Yeah, and one of the key uh, sort of tenets to staying focused is effective communication, which also helps increase uh, performance, as you know. So tell, uh, talk to me about the importance of uh, authentic communication as a small business owner and how important that is. Yeah, boy, I, I think communication is, is one of the biggest parts of business. And I think we don't communicate well enough or even enough. Um, I think small business owners need to really understand that they're the only person in their head. Other people do not know everything they know. Other people have not heard enough of the mission, the, the vision, the goals, struggles, challenges, whatever. When a business owner can share that information, they're really allowing other people into their world and giving them the opportunity to help them be successful. But if they don't communicate, it leaves people um, creating their own ideas of what is really going on and, and they're going to be wrong and they're going to uh, believe negative before they choose positive. Yeah. And, you know, as a, a, a small business leader, Diane, I, I don't need to tell you that small businesses are the backbone of any economy. So I'm curious, how do you think we can reinvent ourselves as business owners to re, uh, sort of calibrate, recalibrate towards the market after COVID? So how do you think the mindset of uh, small business owners should shift to uh, better accommodate today's demands after COVID? Wow, that, that is such a great question. Um, I, I think we have to be really open to um, new ideas, collaborating with employees, um, considering ways of offering our products and services. Like we can't go backward. Life is not going to go back to how it was before COVID. It's only going to move forward. So it's borrowing all of the good things that we learned and discovered and um, identified and really enhancing those moving forward instead of trying to go back to a, a way of being that that's over. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, 
one of the ways that we can reinvent and sort of innovate, in, in my view anyway, is by hiring folks with uh, disabilities in the small business realm because they're reliable, productive, and, and, and they boost morale. Uh, and uh, as you know from doing your research on me, Diane, I was born with what's called uh, spastic quadriplegia cerebral palsy. So outside of hosting this podcast, I also work with organizations to better infuse a more inclusive culture for folks with disabilities into the workforce. So I'm curious to get your perspective on how we can work to become better leaders when it comes to uh, having a lens of inclusion and infusing uh, folks with disabilities into the workforce. Yeah, another great question. I think we have to uh, open our minds up to the understanding that People have something to give. They have something to offer. That, and it's identifying what that thing is. It's being curious and sitting down with someone and exploring what are their dreams and their goals and what do they enjoy doing. It, it It's really like you would want to know that information with anyone. But I, I think businesses are missing out on some really valuable people if they are excluding people with disabilities because – it's as you said, loyal, hardworking, want to achieve, you know, driven. It's all the same things that anyone else has. And honestly, everyone has some sort of disability in their life and in their world. And so I think we need to not focus on the disability, but focus on the ability. Focus on, you know, what is it that, that this person can offer and bring? Yeah, absolutely. And they can offer a competitive advantage to a business, can't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And open up a whole other market, really, right? It, it, it's, yeah, there's huge advantages. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Diana, I also wanted to ask you about uh, the idea of innovation in small business and how you really define uh, business innovators, both in small and uh, in the small business realm, and uh, in, in general, how do you define a business or a personal innovator? So, for me, an innovator is someone who isn't afraid to fail. Uh, it's someone who's always looking at the possibilities. What's possible, right? And keeping it within, the, you know, they they don't go off crazy, but they um, are always looking at ways of solving problems. So what's going on around us and, and how can we better any situation, even incrementally, because overall that just elevates the, you know, the human experience overall. Yeah, and, and, and just following up on that, I'm also curious to get your perspective on the notion of business courage and really operating uh, business with the power of the uh, conviction of your, the courage of your convictions. And what does that really mean to you in business? Yeah. Oh, boy. It means um, really knowing what your values are and really knowing what you uh, stand for and how you want to be seen in the world and sticking to it. And sometimes that means letting clients go. Sometimes it means um, choosing not to work with certain people, um, being very clear about what's acceptable and unacceptable within the culture and environment of your business, and being willing to stand by that because especially for small business, you are your business. It's your reputation on the line. And small business owners, in my opinion, uh, you know, make the decision, this is who I am, this is what's acceptable, this is what is unacceptable. It makes it so much easier to have those conversations when you have that belief and that um, conviction and you're not afraid to stick to it, right? We have to. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Diane, I'm also 
wondering your perspective on, on the notion of empowering people as lead, leaders, and what does that mean to you to elevate someone into a leadership position? So, what, what sort of characteristics do, do you think an em, empowered leader possesses? I think the, there are a couple things that are essential for empowering people to be leaders um, within your organization. The first one is giving them a safe space, letting them know they're 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 probably going to make mistakes, and that's okay, as long as they're learning from their mistakes. Because we need people to feel comfortable and confident that they can try, that they can move forward. Another key element is making sure they really understand what your expectations are and what the consequences are, positive and negative, you know, if they meet your expectations or if they don't, and then letting them go and do, not micromanaging them, letting them go, but making sure they know you are always available to them. You have an open door. They can come to you just to talk through something. Um, And lastly, I would say, When they come to us with um, seeking advice, we shouldn't give it to them right away. We should say, I'm curious what you think you should do, because we're so good at giving the answer that people get really used to not thinking, and that does not empower them to be good leaders. Yeah, and if you empower the people that work under you, you have a chance to broaden your own perspective, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And you're going to learn things that you wouldn't necessarily have thought of that are good for the business. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Diane, I also know that you work with your clients to really embrace the fact that changing your uh, behavior can actually be an asset sometimes. So I'm wondering if we could take a moment to discuss uh, the power of changing your behavior and sort of the benefits that may arise from that as well. Sure, yeah. So I find it interesting that people um, continuously engage in behaviors that don't serve them, but they don't step and think, oh, maybe I should change the behavior. Like they look at it and think it's that something else is going on. And so I encourage my clients to consider a shift to consider trying, you know, something different, doing something differently, um, not wholesale, you know, huge change, but just in little increments to see if then they are more successful, if they can get rid of whatever the, the problem is. And it's so great when they do it and they realize, wow, whatever it was I was afraid of did not happen and I've actually accomplished things that I had been struggling with for so long. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Diane, specifically, I'm curious to get your perspective on empowering women in business because, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be uh, pay equity or pay equality, uh, the, the value of rep- reputations of women in business they can uh, tend to fluctuate from time to time. So I'm, I'm curious, what do you think it means to empower women specifically in business? I think it means to help them um, really embrace who they are and operate from, from who they are, not from who they think other people expect them to be or other people want them to be, to not try and like take on a persona to not try and interact and engage like men do because we're not men. And I think when women are confident and comfortable with who they are, they engage much more effectively in in business and are um, a lot more successful and, and happier. Yeah, absolutely. Uh you know, uh, Diana, I'm fascinated to ask you from a personal and professional perspective, what are your core values that you rely on to achieve your own prosperity? So tell me, 
What is your core values in life or your non-negotiables in life as well? Uh, so my non-negotiables are um, integrity is, is integrity and honesty are at the very top of my list. I think it matters how we show up, how I show up. Um, one of my values is not trying to be all things to all people, that I am clear about what my value is and how I can help people, which makes me very clear on how I cannot. Uh, so um, always operating from a position of, can I really help as opposed to, wow, I need the money. Um, and uh, really caring about other people first. It's all about that value proposition statement, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I know, uh, Diane, as you said earlier in our conversation, that you uh, view each individual business as an individual that brings their own strengths and weaknesses to the table, and you help them sort of uh, go through that puzzle and put it together. And talk to me about the, the importance of embracing your individualism as a business, because that really is your calling card, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think it really is. It, it, and thank you so much for noticing that. So <clears throat> I don't believe in one size fits all. I don't believe that we can plug someone into a process and a system and they're going to then be successful. I do think there are certain things we have to do in business that um, are required to be successful, but the key is figuring out what fits with the individual because those are the strategies they'll implement. It's a waste of time to try and get somebody to do something that really doesn't fit with who they are or what they're comfortable with or um, really what their values are because they're not going to do it. And, or they're going to try it and they're going to be really unsuccessful at it, which is only going to cause frustration. So I, I think it's really, and and I think, you know, each person brings themselves to their business. That's their differentiator. And they have to embrace that and really understand why that uh, is valuable to their clients and their customers. You know, what is it about them that differentiates them from everyone else in their industry. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, Diana, I'm a huge believer in the power of making authentic human connection in business and really starting a conversation to learn and, and grow with, with businesses. So I, I'm fascinated to ask you, what do you think is the key to starting a great business conversation that doesn't necessarily go Straight to the heart of the money matter. So tell me about your thoughts on how we can start a great business conversation. I think we should be curious about the other person and their business without thinking about um, how we can help them. I, I think we just need to let go of that and really be genuinely curious about how are things going? What's exciting them these days? Do they have any uh, initiatives that they're working on? Is there anything that's challenging them, but with a totally open mind so we can really hear who they are? I mean, when I meet people, my favorite thing to do is to say, so tell me your story, because they're going to tell me whatever is top of mind for them, whatever really is important and matters to them. And that's all I really care about because then that's how I'm going to connect with them. I'm going to continue the conversation around the thing that is most important to them, not me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Diane, I know you've been doing this for a while, but I'm also curious to know, when we think about life and business and how they sort of collide or intersect together, I'm, I'm curious, what's the greatest lesson you think that you've learned in business You've also applied to your personal life in order to achieve success as well. You know, uh, Kevin, I think it's all about the relationships. I, I think whenever in life or in business, we are genuinely interested 
in learning about other people and helping other people, uh, that's when we build the best relationships that really serve our needs in our business and in our life. Like that's how we uh, feel accomplished and successful. It's really building meaningful relationships with people. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I want to talk to you about the, the idea of authenticity in business because people's attendance spans are shorter today, as you know, with the advent of social media and getting everything in the 24-hour news cycle. So tell me, what, what do you think is the tried and tested way of uh, really, really uh, exhibiting authenticity as a leader? Because people can see through when they're not authentic in business, can't they? Oh my gosh, yes, they sure can. You can't fake it. I mean, and so you just have to let that go. And quite frankly, the easiest thing in the world is to just be yourself. It's hard to try and be someone else. It, it, that takes a lot of energy. And then, and you have to maintain it, which, which is also exhausting. So, you, you know, what, what I say is just be you, just embrace who you are, be the best you you can be and understand that that's going to resonate with some people and it's not going to resonate with others. And that's great because it's figuring out who it resonates with that matters. Those are the people you want to build relationships with. You don't want to build relationships with the other people. Yeah. And for you, I also know, and I introduced him, uh, speaking as well. So tell me, uh, I know that you'll have a specific mission and vision when you can connect with audiences. So tell me, what's the best part of uh, share, sharing your message from a speaking perspective as well? Oh my gosh, I, I love speaking. You know, I, I think it's getting them engaged in the conversation. I don't like just speaking at people. I tell them from the very beginning, this is participatory. I, I'm going to be asking you questions and, and I'm going to, you know, expect that you answer. Uh, and we're going to have a dialogue. We're, we're going to be engaging with each other because that's when they really get something out of it. People tune out. As you said before, you know, our, our attention spans are so short that it, I got to get them involved in the conversation if they're going to get anything out of it. And that way they retain the information uh, more readily if you involve them, don't they? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know that, uh, Diane, you're a writer and you've written a couple of books. So tell me about the books that you've written, uh, the message behind them, and why uh, you chose to write them. Well, thank you for that. So my first book was Lemonade Stand Selling, and, and at the time I wanted to... Uh, be able to provide information for small business owners about that sales doesn't have to be creepy and difficult and all of those sorts of things. So I uh, wrote that book. Um, my second book was actually is 10 episodes uh, from my podcast. I just took the 10 most listened to episodes and put them into a book so that people could get that information in a different format. And my most recent book, Succeed Without Selling, is my passion project. Uh, I wrote that book because I so want salespeople and business owners to stop engaging in behaviors that don't get them what they're going for and to let go of this whole feeling of selling and switch it to learning, just being curious, just really. And, and so I explain in the book how that works and how it really is easier, more comfortable, more natural, and gets you better results, better long-term results than engaging in this weird sales behavior that we were taught ages ago. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Diane, I'm going to share with you just a little bit about myself. So, you know, I actually found out at the age of nine, Diane, that I wouldn't be able to walk for the for the duration of my life because of the uh, uh, severity of my cerebral palsy. But I live my life through the saying that inclusion 
is the gateway to independence. And I do believe one of the greatest ways you can live life is through the three, what I call uh, the three E's, Diane, energy, effort, and enthusiasm. So tell me about uh, the, impor uh, the importance, rather, of attacking life with energy, effort, and enthusiasm. And your thoughts there as well. Well, I, you know, uh, I, I think why bother if you're not going to approach life with energy, enthusiasm, and effort, right? That it, those things build on each other and actually make it easier to accomplish the things you want to accomplish as opposed to feeling like you're always uh, fighting to get where you want to go. You know, enthusiasm it breeds other enthusiasm. You know, it's contagious. It gets other people energized and and interested uh, and enthusiastic. And so for me, it makes life better, happier, easier. Uh, so, uh, you know, why would you want to do it any other way? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for myself as a, a speaker, Diane, you know, I'm often booked to speak to share my personal story of resilience and how I have overcome obstacles. And one of the other many hats that I wear is I also help first-time speakers sort of break into the market. So I always tell them that use your own story and your life experience to, to relate to the problems that you're solving. But it, it's also important, as I said earlier, to have your own value proposition statement and uh, really know why you want to help people as opposed to solving every problem under the sun. So I'm curious to get your thoughts on how can first-time uh, public speakers be most successful? Boy, that, that is such a good question. Um, I think they, uh, well, gosh, there's a couple of things. Don't put words on slides. Don't use slides if you don't have to. Um, speak from the heart. Uh, ha have like three points that, that you want to get across and no more than three, and use humor and uh, really your authentic voice. Don't 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 use big words. You know, just really speak as who you are. Um, and remember that the audience is on your side, right? They're your friend. They're they're not paying attention to anything other than learning and and getting whatever messages message it is that you are trying to share so they're not you know you sort of get out of your own head kind of thing that it, that it's really they're not paying attention to a lot of the things you think they are yeah and it's important not to be robotic if you yeah. can avoid that right yes yes it's absolutely true yeah absolutely and uh, Diane, you've referenced your podcast a couple of times, so I'll give you the space to tell me all about Accelerate Your Business Growth and what it's all about, my friend. Thank you for that. So on my podcast, I interview people who have expertise in different areas of business, you know, marketing, legal, accounting, taxes, um, productivity, you name it. If it has to do with business, if this is if their business is helping businesses in a particular area, then they come on and they share that expertise with the listeners because the goal is that the listeners can take away information they can then implement in their business to be more successful. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, uh, Diane, I'm a huge believer in the power of celebrating the wins in life because, you know, we all, all have one life to live and, you know, I'm a huge believer in emptying sort of the gas tank of experiences in life and really ha having authentic moments in life. So tell me, how do you celebrate your own personal or professional wins in life, my friend? Oh, my gosh. How do I celebrate? Um, I think... Um, that's a really good question. Sometimes it's with an actual celebration. Sometimes it's sharing 
the information with my husband, my kids, uh, my my brother and sister. Um, sometimes it's uh, going out for a nice dinner, uh, having a nice glass of wine. It just it depends on what the thing is and what my circumstances are at the time, whether I can uh, really. Uh, whether I want to have a big celebration or just acknowledge whatever that success is. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we talked we talk earlier about inclusion in business, but I also, uh, before I get out of here, wanted to ask you about uh, the importance of diversity of perspective in business. Because as we said earlier, we can learn and grow from other people in business at the appropriate time. So tell me your perspective on the importance of having a diversity of perspective and how important that is. Yeah, I've even written about this. I think it is hugely important. I, diversity leads to innovation. It leads to creativity. So if you don't have diversity of minds in your business or attached to your business so that you are hearing other perspectives and other ideas, it's very hard to grow it, it, and be even sustainable because you um, you're only hearing your viewpoint, your perspective, and we're all limited in, in how much we know, how much we can create all those things. Diversity, boy, I mean, it can take a business just about anywhere, uh, but the lack of it can really stunt the growth of a business. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Diane, my final question for you this morning has to do all about legacy and how you want your personal and professional legacy to be defined. Well, my personal legacy is um, ha having raised two incredible humans, uh, my children, uh, and seeing them happy and productive and um, contributing to society. And uh, my business legacy, I would like to be um, that I have helped as many small business owners and professionals as I possibly can overcome whatever challenges they're experiencing and um, be happier, more successful in in their life and their work. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, tell me, Diane, if people want to get connected with you, what's the best and most effective way they can do that? You know, the best way is to go to my website, helbigenterprises.com, because everything is there, you know, e either there or through a link. Well, fabulous. And I have to tell you, I, I was uh, delighted to engage in conversation with you uh, this morning all about business leadership, your work in the space. And time on my behalf is most appreciated. And I want to thank you for being here this morning. Oh, thank you for the conversation. I've enjoyed it.